Hello again, it's Mr. Peak, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back, and this is part two of a two-part video on my restoration of a Wilton four-inch bench vise. So in this half, this part, I'm going to paint and reassemble, and I still got some more de-rusting to do. Be sure and watch part one if you haven't seen it, so let's begin. The next thing I want to do is de-rust the handle and the end of the screw. They're pretty badly rusted and I again want to use the chemical for that. I probably could use the wire brush but let's do it this way and I was trying to figure out some container because I only have a quart of this stuff. So this should do. I went into, you know, I, I go into the kitchen. That's my resource. Went through all the drawers, and my wife, she's pretty organized, and she's got all these little trays, you know, for silverware, and that's just about right. So with the rubber moved back a little bit, let's see if we can get this up to level. And there's all that junk. I told you I'm going to strain that with... Uh, coffee filter. Holy mackerel, there's a leak. That's my punishment for, for stealing this from my wife. As if this stuff doesn't cost enough. Alright, let's try it again and see what happens here. See if I got enough. I know I won't. And the last little bit, there isn't much in here. Alright, what I'm going to have to do here is drape this like I did. I think this is going to work, but I'm just about three-eighths of an inch short. As mentioned earlier, I'm going to machine off the flat right here. It has a few little dings on it, and it wasn't very good from the factory, I don't believe. And I'll be using this big two-inch cutter running the machine, the bridge board, at slow speed. Notice how I have it bolted down. Okay, let's have at it. I'm only going to take off about ten thousandths. Looks mighty good. No, I need about another 5,000. It didn't clean up right here. Right along the edge here. I will not show that. I will show you the results here in about two seconds. Finished. I took off a total of about 15 thousandths. That is right in the neighborhood of a 64th or less. Looks real good. It machined real nice. Not sure just what the material is. It might be malleable iron. I just degreased it, so let's do a little masking here and get it ready for painting. Ready to paint. I will not show the other part because it's a duplication. Good morning. It's the next day and the chemical has been working here for over 24 hours. So let's take it out and scrub it and see what it looks like. I did move the little rubber grommets here a couple times and slid the handle back and forth so that the chemical could act on everything so we'll put her in water and I will scrub it off a little bit and I'll do that mainly off camera be right back you know what I'm not overly thrilled about the way this turned out and I think that uh, the chemical couldn't get under the end I might try to face this off or just wire brush it 
and there's kind of some funny staining on here so the draping uh, with the rags that I showed you was only marginally so actually it was a failure so we got some rust there but that'll come off with the wire wheel and I guess this will too but uh, like I say I'm not thrilled with it so I will mechanically remove this and try to make it a little bit brighter because it doesn't look good at all I used the wire wheel and it did clean up pretty well but I don't like that finish so I'm going to give it a once over with some abrasive cloth 220 grit I am extremely hesitant to show this operation I probably should exclude it do not attempt to do this in your shop it is incredibly dangerous but I desire to face off the end of the screw that seems to have a few divots and marks on it that are not pleasing to my eyes anyway. Well, I'm still alive and uninjured, and it turned out too good to be true. I probably should have chamfered it, but I was afraid. Let's get on with it. Well, the project is progressing nicely. As you can see, everything is virtually done. We're masked, and we're all ready to paint. So let's talk a little bit about the color. Apparently, Wilton didn't use a primer, and that's fine, and I'm not going to use a primer anyway, but it's all been degreased. And how am I going to find the color? Well, I watched a lot of videos and I found out that several people, including and especially Keith Rucker, used this rust oleum hammered paint and it's called uh, Verge Green. So that's what I'm going to use. I had this in stock, so I'll be using that rattle can. And there is a sample of it. And of course it's not exactly the same, but semi-close, and I think it looks better than the gray that I used on that little 3-incher. And I'm going to use the Comfort Grip Rust-Oleum that was given to me last year by Tony Perillo out down in Texas, so thanks for that. And I'll just show a very brief clip of painting. Nobody wants to watch that. Well, I was painting in a windstorm, so I had to move inside. I don't like doing that, and I don't have much paint left, so I'll be spraying with fumes. I wouldn't want to actually have to buy any of this. Well, it's been over 24 hours since I painted, and the paint is dry, and it looks quite good, I think. I'm satisfied with the color, although it's not 100% authentic, but I'm ready to take all the masking off. And we're almost ready for some reassembly. Okay, everything is ready for reassembly. Let's go. Okay, before I reassemble the Wilton, let's talk about this other little vise. Remember, this is a 4-inch wide jaw. Let me slide that apart. But here is a 3-inch set of castings from Casting Specialties. These were sold to schools all over the country. And they made a beautiful little bench vise, also with a round ram. Very nice gray iron castings from uh, Mr. Struck up in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. And the ram would be inch and a quarter pipe, regular black pipe. 
So a lot of these were made in schools. This is a project I intend to do eventually here on YouTube. Haven't got around to it yet, but there you go. Movable jaw and the fixed jaw, the main casting. I'm not sure how much these cost, but they were kind of expensive even back in the 60s. So look for more of this in the future. All right, back to the job at hand. I'm tapping out the holes just to clean them up a little bit. I'll do that to all four holes. These little chamfers you see here on the corner of the jaws actually belong into this corner. Just in case that corner is not square, I'm, I suppose. One thing very nice about the Wilton Weiss design is that the screw and the nut and the thread and all of that is totally enclosed even here on the back side and it has a very long nut. Now I never did take that out but the nut itself instead of just being a couple inches long is, is quite long and you probably have seen that in other people's videos. I'm going to oil very lightly the round ram and the key. I don't like a lot of oil all over the place and possibly grease could be used but it will attract all the sawdust from filing and, uh, and sawing and I do not like that so just lightly lubricate it in my humble opinion and it, it just slides so nicely. Before I assemble it, I'm going to use some of this Permatex uh, white lithium grease simply because there was white grease on there before. Probably couldn't matter less, but I think probably the grease is better than just using oil. I don't even need to spread that. It'll, it'll work its way in. And then the screw is ready to go in like this. And I think I'll put a little bit in this groove. How do you like this old school desk I'm using as a table here from 1938? It's got ink wells and a pencil trough. Pencil groove. Groove. These vices are extremely expensive in the order of five to eight hundred dollars for the four inch, maybe a little bit less without the swivel base. Look it up for me and put it in the comments if you can find the value or price of a brand new Wilton four inch. How do you like the contrast here between the three inch and the four inch? Do you like the gray? I think I'd like to go back and repaint this, although the gray is just fine. Also, again, we got a swivel base here and not over here. Now, a word of advice, please, please, in your travels through life, do not beat on your vice as you're bending something or repairing. That's what wrecks the vices. Also, too much heat from a welding torch. Do not get them hot. And if Wilton thought there should be a four-foot handle on here, they would have put one on. You will bend the handle someplace here, and then it won't slide and it will infuriate future owners. So no cheater, no hammering, use some common sense, but I know that we are desperate when we repair things. You know what? I forgot to remove the masking off of the original decal. I hope I don't pull it off with the tape. And there we go, Wilton 400. One more comment. Now some of you are going to say, why don't you take an artist brush and do all the lettering? Well, a lot of people do that and I do not object to it, but it is not authentic and I'm a stickler for authenticity. Wilton did not do that.
Well, that completes this two-part video. I hope you watch both parts in their entirety. There'll be a few still pictures to follow. What do you think of the rebuild? Is the color all right or is it a little bit too bright for you? I like the way this got machined here and, and the color of the jaws, which I did not add the color. That black color came out of that de-rusting chemical. So there it is, a Wilton number 400. There we go. I hope you liked the video. And I will see you next time. I have 1,300 other videos. So long for now. This is Mr. Pete.